Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I wanted to do, I wanted to, to find sort of somebody else to have one good watch. Uh, I've seen a lot of collections of some nice watches, but the, they're less expensive. They're under a thousand or maybe they're between one and two thousand, somewhere in that neighborhood. Most of them have uh, ETA movements or somebody else's movement for the most part. And I thought, you know, those collections are fine and people enjoy them. And but, you know, they have a certain budget. However, in looking at those, I thought, well, you know, you could instead of buying two or three of them, you could get one really top grade watch and then you could, you know, have the other ones as well. And so, uh, so I thought, well, what I'll, I'm going to do, I'm going to find some watches that are under $4,000 and some very much under $4,000 that, that you could have. If you had one of them, you'd have one good watch. Now, I've included the lowest price I could find, which for the most part is pre-owned. Some of them aren't, though. Some of them are very good buys. So let's take a look at that. Now, I have... Uh, several criteria I set up. The first one was that they have to be in production since 2000. Uh, 37 millimeters would be the minimum size. Now, for those who prefer smaller sizes, you're really in luck because they have a lot of very good watches for the smaller sizes. Um, a good movement for the most part i think all of the ones that i picked are in-house movements they're manufactured by the by the watch company uh under three thousand nine ninety nine or under four thousand actually now the final criteria is something you'd actually wear uh, this isn't something that you'd you wouldn't wear when i first started watch collection i got a uh patek philippe for i think it was around 4500 something like that uh, Calatrava from 1968. Uh, I was afraid to wear it. I was afraid I'd bump it or something like that. It was a wonderful watch. It still is, but it was like 32 or something millimeters, and it was just too small. And you know, I love that watch, and I'd wear it every now and then, but not very often. So I thought, well, let's let's see if you have have a watch. It's really a very special one. But you can, you know, you're gonna have to save for a little. So let's take a look at the ones that uh, that I came up with with that criteria. Now the first one is Jadir Lacoutre Master Control Date, uh, 37 millimeters. Now I found one for 3,500 pre-owned. You can probably, you might be able to find some less than that. Right now is not the best time to buy a watch because they're all the prices have just have really gone up a great deal. Uh, and <clears throat> some watches that in the past they may have included have gone up so much I didn't even bother with them. Now, uh, the next one is one I've, I've mentioned before. It's a good deal at full price. It, it's about $6,500. Really an excellent watch. It's a Bulgari Octo Romo. And uh, it has the caliber BVL199, which is made by made by Bulova, and Bulova has, is connected up with Bul, Bul, Bulgari, not Bulova. And the, this watch is, uh, I got one, uh, and they're great watches. I, the, I got it for somebody else, but it was, uh, it's, it's <laughs> they're incredibly good buys. Uh, like everything else, I think the prices have probably been creeping up, but on the used market, I found one for 3500 uh, and sometimes you can even even find new ones for that at the uh, secondary uh, uh, merchants, secondary dealers, secondary market. Okay, this one, C1 Morgan Area Weight Chronometer. Now, this is by Christopher Ward, uh, $28.95. Now, that's the list price, caliber SH21COSC. Uh, now, the caliber SH-21 is a caliber that was developed by Christopher Ward through a company in Switzerland that they own. So it's sort of a, it's a very interesting um, kind of combination. Uh, but this is a watch that uh, I think is a very cool watch. It's a chronometer grade, USC. The price is great. It's... Uh, 
hand wound, really a very, very nice watch. I'm surprised they, oh wait, they do. Uh, you can see the chronometer. It says that in order to put chronometer on a watch, it has to be COSC. And you can see at the uh, sub dial over at nine o'clock, you can, whether it, it says chronometer there. This would, this would be a nice watch. It's something you could wear every day too. Uh, the Morgan area weight, I just sort of, I'm a Morgan car fan, so that didn't, didn't influence me a bit. Now, here you ended up with two watches. Um, the first one I found under uh, 4,000 was the Metro Date Power Reserve, and up there, uh, the DUW4401 movement. It's a really beautiful watch, a heck of a lot of watch uh, for the money. Uh, this is the uh, list price of it, and I'm sure you'll be able to find something better deal on that. But this would be a very good, I think, everyday watch. Uh, hand wound, which is I happen to like. Uh, and you have a power reserve indicator. Nice big date down at 6 o'clock and then a sub-dial uh, right uh, between the center and the 6. Now, the other one was the Nomos, uh, they're both of them are Nomos, Nomos Glashuda is actually the full name, uh, Tangent uh, Neomatic 41 upgrade, update. Uh, this one won the 22, uh, the 2018 uh, Grand Prix for what they call the Challenge Prize. And the Challenge Prize well, is for watches that are under $4,000. I'm going to show some more on it. They have, they've only had it, I think, for the last about the last four years. And this was, I think, may have been the first one uh, to win that prize. But I saw this. Now, originally, they had it listed at um, $3,520. That's the list price. And uh, the new list price is $4,100, which is pretty close. Uh, but again, this is one that I, I have a feeling you could find it uh, under uh, 4000 without a lot of trouble. Both of these watches have the DUW calibers in it. Uh, the the one, the 6101, uh, DUW 6101. This is a newer one, and I found out about that at a lecture that uh, the Horological Society of New York had. That is the uh, Nomos Glasudi Tangent Neomatic 41 update is, I mean, seriously good watch. All of them, I think, are seriously good. Now, this one is called the Zenith Port Royal Elite Dual Time. Uh, the Elite Dual Time, I it, they have a the movement in there is a caliber 682, and um, <clears throat> uh, this is a Zenith caliber, and the the Elite calibers are just sort of they're like good solid movements. Uh, by Zenith. Uh, this one was, I found on Chrono 24 for uh, 1916 and that's with a, uh, a metal bracelet on it. So I think that that, that is another one. And it's, it's not the sports watchy uh, kind of thing. 38 millimeters. Uh, this is a watch I like a lot. I have, I have a, uh, uh, an older one, I think from the 1990s, uh, a Zenith Elite Dual Time. And uh, it's 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 done well for me. <laughs> uh, anyhow, this is another one I think you know you could find some that this would be a you know solid good watch uh, above your average one. Now the the last one is the Gerard Perigo Rally Monte Carlo 1976. These are hard to find, but they're I found one on eBay for twenty nine ninety five. And if you like chronographs, which I do not, this one looks like a heck of a good deal. A very interesting watch. There are a lot of them. Uh, I saw one for sale. I think it was for like six or eleven thousand, something way up there. And then I saw this one on eBay for uh, under three thousand. I thought, you know, this is something you can find. Gerard Perigo. I was looking for a Gerard Perigo, 1966. Uh, which I think if you look enough, you can find some under 4,000. Uh, those are, are nice, just good flat-out watches. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is these. This is just another way to go. Uh, one of the other criteria was to have a watch without silicon hairsprings. Uh, silicon escapements, they're okay, but silicon hairsprings are... 
I just, I, I don't care for them, not because they're not good. They're excellent. Uh, they're non-magnetic. They, there are all kinds of good things about them. But I think for sort of traditional watch collection, mm, not for me. And so another source that you can look at are the Grand Prix winners. Now, here are five Grand Prix winners. Three of them are for the challenge category, the uh, Sega um, Design Blue Planet and the two tutors. And the, the thing about the, uh, the two tutors, they both have silicon hairsprings, which I don't, like I said, I sort of took that out of the running, but you know, they are Grand Prix winners and that's something. And Tudor makes a good watch. Uh, the Sega Design Blue Planet, I don't know that much about, but it's sort of interesting. I believe it's from China. And, um, but you know, winning that category is up a lot of some stiff competition. Now, a couple older ones, uh, the Mont Blanc Star GMT World Time. This is a cool little watch. This, in 2011, it won the Petite Aiguille uh, Award. And at, at that time, it was uh, listed as 4,100 Swiss francs. You can find these all over the place. They're cool watches. They have, uh, they, they do have an ETA movement. They're, this is before Mont Blanc started having their own movements or ones from uh, Minerva. Uh, the other one that is I really like uh, is an Eberhardt uh, Scrasso Gap 300. Now, it won the sports award in 2016, and I happened to know the judge who announced this award. And I said, my God, I said, how did a watch with an ETA won, win this uh, Grand Prix sports award? And he said, the price, he said the price was, was I think it was a couple thousand bucks, something like that. It wasn't very much. And uh, he said that it was, it did everything these other watchers did that were, I think one of them was a, um, uh, uh, Ulysse Nardine, it was like 80,000 bucks, <laughs> gorgeous watch. But I mean, when you have something like this, and this is, this is a, this is a good solid little watch, so. And it's something I, I think you could wear every day. But like I said, these are all award winners. And so, but they have some of the other criteria that I uh, wasn't quite sure of. But they're all from uh, 2000 or newer. Let me know what you think. And if you have other suggestions, I'd really like to hear those too. This is an invitation to subscribe if you like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collections.